All right, so yesterday Mitch uh, built these two manifolds right here. So we've got an elbow SDR pipe, 10 inch pipe, and then these four inch inserts that go into the pipes. And so today we're gonna be installing them into the greenhouse and getting our two air manifolds ready. So we're gonna have an intake and uh, or inlet and outlet manifold. Um, so the inlet is gonna take all the hot air from the greenhouse run it through and equally distribute the air through the pipes um, that we're going to go through the greenhouse and then the outlet manifold is going to collect all that air and bring it back out into the greenhouse. We're going to be connecting weeping tile into this so it's perforated which allows the moisture in the air to condense. Uh, most of the energy in warm air is in the moisture and so that heat of condensation is where you get most of the energy dropping. The other benefit of having the perforated pipes is that the, uh, the moisture that comes out of the air can actually feed the roots of the plants. And then in the same way that we get energy coming out of the air through condensation, uh, in the summertime we can actually get cooling in the greenhouse through the process of evaporation. So when warm dry air goes through this system and it creates evaporation in the soil, it actually has a cooling effect to the air. So that's why they call these subterranean heating and cooling systems is because this actually does act as a dehumidification and rehumidification system to cool or heat the greenhouse depending on what's needed. It's a pretty interesting design. And as I've mentioned in previous videos and blogs uh, and even on my passive solar greenhouse design course, up until recently I couldn't tell my students or even my YouTube viewers whether or not these systems worked. But we've spent the last three months studying these systems in a program called Transys. And now we know, uh, based on that model anyways, that they do actually seem to have an effect, a very positive effect actually. The model is indicating right now that our greenhouse will stay above zero until the middle of January. So we've documented the construction of all the manifolds. We're going to document the construction inside the greenhouse as it all goes together. And we'll be sharing videos on how this uh, comes together on YouTube as well as we'll be putting a new module together for our course. So any people who have already taken the course will get access to the new module. If you are not part of the course, you can get access to the course. Hi, sweetie. You're really excited about these too, hey? Um, if you want to learn how to build one of these things, it turns out that the tool that I built for the course, the Passive Solar Greenhouse Design Tool, which runs on Microsoft Excel, both in the cloud or on your own computer, is actually set up perfectly to design these systems. I set it up not knowing if they worked or not, but I set it up using fan laws that uh, ensured that we had a good distribution of air, um, that we had the right number of air changes per hour, and so the program that I built actually works perfect for designing these things. And so you can get access to that tool and I'll leave a link to our DIY greenhouse design package in the link below. Or you can get the full meal deal and take the whole course from start to finish. Um, we will be adding some additional content in the future and the price might go up as a result of that because we spent a lot of time and money figuring this out. Um, but if you buy the course now, you'll get access to it sometime in the future when that new content goes up and that will be ongoing because once we put this into the ground we're actually going to be instrumenting the whole thing and we will tune the model that we built the digital model so that we know the digital model is predicting how it's going to be then we're going to observe it in an empirical way then we're going to bring that empirical data back into the model to make the model better and as more greenhouses go in we'll continue to improve the characteristics of that model so that we will have a piece of software that we can use to help people to design their own subterranean heating and cooling systems custom to their soils, custom to the size of the greenhouse, custom to their latitude, um, all the criteria that are important in order to ensure that you have a really effective heat system inside of the greenhouse itself. Because of the way that we design these systems, the two sets of plans that we have for sale right now on the greenhouse as well, the greenhouse course, so the greenhouse product page, um, also have systems that will work very effectively. Um, and we're going to be selling these plans for this greenhouse here in the not too distant future. We're calling it the Birchwood. So you can get access to that. And the other thing that is going to be available in the not too distant future is if you want to buy this greenhouse that's also going to be available down the road as well so if you want a greenhouse that's kind of tried and tested 
uh, that works that you can come to our farm and see to see if you like it. Um, we're going to be having an open house in the not too distant future um, so you can come and check it out for yourself and see if it's going to be a fit for your, uh, your farm. This greenhouse is super important for food production in northern climates. Um, as, as you have seen in some of our other videos, we only have 100 frost-free days here. Uh, and that's fine for potatoes and carrots and kale and chard. And you can even make stuff grow that likes more heat if you find the right microclimates. But we literally cannot grow tomatoes here in this climate and have them red by the time the frost comes around. We have to pick them green and bring them inside and ripen them after the fact. But with a greenhouse like this, we'll be getting uh, red tomatoes kind of in the middle of the summer. And there's no reason that we can't do three seasons in this greenhouse. And this particular model of greenhouse is going to be 800 square feet when complete. Uh, and so I anticipate that we'll be able to grow the majority of the vegetables that my family requires, at least the heat loving ones, inside of this space. And uh, every, anything else that doesn't require the heat, like the root crops, like I was just mentioning, we'll do in our zone one garden which we're growing right in front of the greenhouse. Again, zoned very close to our center of energy so that we have very efficient workflow to produce enormous amounts of food. Eventually out here, we're gonna integrate chickens and we're gonna int integrate ducks and those livestock will also get access to the greenhouse as well because we want that animal impact in there seasonally. Um, and so we're gonna have a very integrated system within this, uh, this inner zone. Anyways, stay tuned to the YouTube channel. We'll be putting updates on how this uh, system goes in as well as uh, how it works in the coming months and years. Um, we're going to continue to improve them and continue to study it and continue to disseminate the information as well. Um, one thing to keep an eye out for on our website, if you're not on our newsletter you might want to sign up for that. Um, we're actually going to be putting a white paper together on how these systems work and everything that we learned from them. Um, that will be coming out sometime probably before Christmas and uh, that white paper will get updated on a semi-regular basis as we learn more from the empirical experiments that we're going to be doing on these systems when they get into the ground. Okay, so we're in a sea of pipes right now. The greenhouse guts. Yeah, the greenhouse guts. The boys cut them to... 35 feet. 35 feet. And it's a good thing my mother-in-law is here because she did some quick math <laughs> and uh, saved us a bunch of headache. Um, the rolls are 250 feet and I should have done the math myself. And so we wanted to get a dimension that would be an integer essentially, so not a, a fraction of what a roll could produce. Otherwise we'd have to put connectors in here. So that was good that she was around. So what, what did we get? Seven? Seven from each 250 roll. Yep. So we got seven of these pipes for each 250 foot roll. So these are all ready to go. And now you'll, we're gonna head over to the greenhouse. We've prepared the ground and the pipes for the earth mover to show up tomorrow. So let's go take a peek. Okay, so the, you'll notice the pipes are in the ground right now. And we put, or the boys have put pink tape on the top tier of the, uh, the manifold. And the reason for that is that we're going to lay the pipes out now and we're going to set the camera up as they do it. We're going to only put the lower tier of pipes onto the ground so that when the earth mover comes we can backfill over top of those. And as soon as that layer has been backfilled then we're going to put the second tier of pipes on. But while he's backfilling we don't want soil getting into the manifold which is why we've covered them in duct tape. So that duct tape is going to have to come off and then the next set of pipes are going to get installed. So the next step they're going to take, they're going to level the pipes out and then we're going to start running this sea of pipes into the actual greenhouse. Now before I turn the camera off and put it back to time lapse, a lesson I learned this morning the hard way, I was trying to take this off the pipe because we had it in the wrong orientation and I cracked it. Now this is a $328 elbow. Um, luckily it's PVC and so I just got some PVC glue into the crack and I managed to uh, fix it. Hopefully it doesn't crack again. So they're a lot more delicate than I was expecting. So be gentle when you're trying to use a rubber mallet to uh, kick these things off. Anyways, just a little lesson that I'd share it. Okay, we're gonna go back to the time lapse and watch the pipes go in. <laughs> Thank you. 
so this manifold is now ready to go. The boys uh, level both sides. I don't really care about the relative level. I do care about the level from side to side, mostly because this pipe is flat. And so there's gonna be a lot of mass on top of this. And pipes generally are quite strong, but it's important that you support underneath the pipe so that you don't end up with bending forces cracking the pipe. And so what they did was they leveled it out and then they tamped it with a hand tamper. And now you'll notice that these pipes are all open. So we're gonna run all the pipes, connect the bottom tier so that when we can, when the excavator comes, we can excavate or sorry, fill the greenhouse up on that first tier. Like I mentioned earlier, these guys are all, they're drums. They're all sealed up so that soil doesn't end up inside them. We've got our vertical pipe in the right location. We're gonna cut that down. Uh, we're gonna cut it in half. And so that's gonna be our intake portion. There's an opposite one on the out, uh, other side, which is gonna be our outlet. Now, that's a really important point. So if you um, are designing an air system, something called reverse return, which means that the inlet is opposite of the outlet. And the reason that's really important is that if I put the elbow on the other side, on the same side of the pipe, so if there was an inlet pipe here and an outlet pipe on the same side, then air like water will always want to take the path of least resistance. And so all the air would end up on this side of the greenhouse. Putting the inlet and outlet opposite of each other means that every molecule of air has to go through the exact same distance as every other molecule of air, which means that the resistance placed on the system is uniform throughout the entire system, which translates to we have an equal distribution of heat throughout the entire system. Versus if we had all the air going through one part of the system, all the heat would concentrate there and not in another place. So the way that translates, I'll just move the camera around here so you guys can see. Now where Mitch is standing over there, can you go over to the elbow there, Mitch? This whole thing? Yeah. So that is kitty corner to the other one. If you guys notice, if you're looking, we've got two camera views. We've got one here, which is the outlet, and one over there, which is the inlet. Now the inlet is on the back of the greenhouse because we're gonna put a solar thermal collector on that wall. So when the sun in the winter time is at its lowest angle, it's gonna come straight through the glazing. It's gonna warm the air up. The back panel is black. It has a low albedo, which means most of the solar radiation that's gonna hit it from the sun is gonna get absorbed and converted into low grade radiation or heat that can get picked up by the air and put underneath into this system here. We did a bunch of modeling on collecting heat just kind of inside of the greenhouse. But then when we added this extra solar thermal collector on the back wall, it, it had a very dramatic effect on how much energy actually gets put underground. So we'll show all that all goes in a little bit later. Right now, we're gonna set the camera up and we're gonna pull all the pipes in and we're gonna get the first course of pipes installed. And then we'll get the vertical risers for the inlet and the outlet done. And then we're pretty much, pretty much done for the day as far as the air collector is going. I've gotta get a small little box built tonight so that my utilities can come in, my water, my power, and if I choose down the road to put in some sort of a gas or propane, I can do that. Likely, what will happen, I've got a boiler coming, I think, a boiler, a wood boiler that will be used for the whole property. And so we'll likely sit a, a wood boiler on the back end of this greenhouse, and then I'll put some glycol tubes through there, which will then allow us to put some heat in, in the kind of, um, coldest part of the year if we choose to heat the greenhouse down the road, which I haven't decided upon yet. Okay, let's bring these pipes in.
Okay guys, hope you found that interesting. Stay tuned and we'll see you guys in the next video.